Howdy, stranger. Don't say howdy, stranger to me. I'll be back. Hey, everybody. This is episode five of the uh, T2, 2T, two, two minute Terminator, where we <laughs> break down bolt by bolt Terminator every two minutes at a time it could have been one minute but it wouldn't have made sense with the wouldn't title have been enough. it wouldn't have been enough and also it would have taken twice as long to do the show and if that's we actually true. if it turns out we hate this that's not good uh i'm <laughs> actor comedian ethan mckinley who's at a loose end right now so he's doing a podcast uh with baron fitzgerald we never gave the introductions before hmm. hello and his sister ellie fitzgerald <laughs> who if you listen to uh episode one was described as looking almost exactly like uh, edward furlong this is true you have his hair I've recently had all my hair cut off so rather boy like so it's episode 5 <laughs> it, it's working I like it that's we it. are in I guess uh, it's episode 5 so that's minute 8, eight to, to, ten. to 10 so cue it up at 8 to 10 really getting into the nit- nitty gritty now we are literally taking the Terminator gritty apart. meaning the ho- we're at the bum <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Yale uh, yeah basically Kyle has just been uh had a light shone on him by the cops <laughs> and he's pulling on uh, a homeless man's trousers <laughs> <laughs> which is nice you don't see that many times in films but when you do it's fantastic a real treat for the eyes so yeah in the last episode if you've come this far please subscribe uh, and uh, follow us on the Facebook page which is 2T 2 Minute Terminator now in the last episode one of the cops we thought was who oh god what did we think was the cop Tom Oberhaus uh, whose career was brief, playing uh, Minutemen and Cops in only four credits to his name, and his career ended by the looks of it in 1984. The Terminator finished him. <laughs> the curse strikes Terminated again his, uh, career. Uh, for Ed Dogans, who is actually the cop who chases uh, Michael Bean down the alleyway, uh, who's the mixed race gentleman, uh, looking bewildered when he's asked what year it is. Mm. <laughs> he is jumped on in an alleyway, though. He is. And has his gun wrestled off of him. Accosted yeah. by a half-naked man with some very smelly trousers. He's not, he's not doing a very good job of serving and protecting, I guess. Nah. I mean, really, if we're honest. And, it, and his friends are coming. His friends are coming. Ah, oh, that's probably why I was about. That's just finished my question completely. <laughs> 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 you'd knock him out and Thank take you. his uniform because you'd be in a, a position of trust. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Although he'd rather wear the um, piss-soaked Over. trousers. What More honest. Think? More honest. More honest. <laughs> It's working class. <laughs> uh, yeah, what do you reckon, uh, Baron? What would you have done in this situation? <laughs> would you have taken a homeless man's trousers or just broken into the department store you appeared in time next to? Oh, um, <clears throat> personally, I'd rather have just shot the bad cops. I'd have just shot them dead, take their vehicle. Wouldn't and, that have yeah. ca- caused more of a kind of... Uh, uh, a uh, rigmarole. <laughs> a rigmarole. <laughs> no, I'm actually a dead shot. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> plus, plus, I'm a, I'm, um, I'm a futuristic soldier. So and brought more cops. Bring, yeah, bringing down cops wouldn't exactly Just be dead. hard. Yeah, that's it. That's what I'm used to. I personally would have left the hobo alone. It's quite handy that he happens to be right next to a he department does, store that has all the clothes in there. Well, it's handy that he's next to a hobo. But my question yeah. is, is when he goes into the shop and he picks up the nice new trench coat and he's got his cool Nike vandals. Hey, good. Well done. You knew I the name. That. Um, why not get a new pair of trousers then? I'd have totally kitted myself out. If they've got Nikes in there, I would have got oh. some Calvin Klein pants. I would have got some Avisu <laughs> jeans. <laughs> I would have, you know... Fred parried it up. I would have, I would have got the works. Some sunnies. He's basic. He's a basic man. He doesn't need that. Yeah, but dude, come on! I would not be running around, especially if I knew I was gonna be saving a chick. That there's a possibility I could be nailing. He's not in. Po- he's not interested in pulling her. Yeah, no, he's got to. He's got to create John Connor. There's a such create a- God. He doesn't know <laughs> that though. It's such Come a and on, you shouldn't if you've not seen the film you've just had it ruined for you but then again if, if you're not listening seen, to Two Minute Terminator and watching Terminator <laughs> in two minute, if you're watching in Two Minute Increments two as not. we go which is I guess when we get to Terminator Salvation and we will uh, <laughs> Ellie's not seen Terminator Salvation have you? no so I think you shouldn't Bad. watch that and you should watch it you should watch it in Two Minute Increments I'd be a little guinea pig an experiment yeah going back to my point 
I don't think there was any need to pull Sarah Connor. There is such a thing called rape. He is a soldier at the end of the oh, day. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but girls like a guy in uniform. They do. You but know, girls they are also in smelly like trousers. Go, girls also like a chain. Come on, out. it's all. <laughs> It's all shades of grey now, isn't it? So it is. Let's, not, let's, let's, let's not bring Fifty Shades of Grey into this. Let's not mention that film. No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> We'd like to repeat, this is that not a, a commentary on <laughs> Shades of Grey. <laughs> <laughs> on to the department shades store. Uh, <laughs> he's got the jacket, he's got the sneakers. Uh, why wouldn't you just grab a pair of trousers quickly? Yeah, totally. I'm really of that opinion. I just find that a bit bizarre. Or was that hobo wearing another pair of trousers? Uh, he's wearing like long johns or oh, some long like johns, thermal underwear, yeah. which I guess ah. is good if you're on the street. Well, if you're on the streets of LA, you wouldn't actually need them. It's yeah. quite warm. And it's May, yeah. But yeah, I would have definitely got new trousers. <coughs> just putting that out there. So anyway, yeah, he's being chased by the cop. He would you, now you, don't, you don't want pee seeping into your new, your new you Randall sneakers. You wouldn't want it anyway, <laughs> I suppose, though, in the defence of the film, if you'd lived this kind of hand-to-mouth existence in this, like, horrible Orwellian future... Is it Orwellian? Horrible. <laughs> I suppose it's more of a, uh, a Huxley-esque future of scientific dictatorship. Not... Uh, well, it's Highly. a mix of both. With robots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, what was I going to say? Yeah, because he's, I guess he's grown up in that awful place and time, uh, a smelly pair of trousers wouldn't really phase him. No. Nah. But just given the option... Given the option, you'd think... I'd be like, I've got time. Or would you? Because you're, you've never seen department stores. You'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> He's seen a department store. Yeah, in pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Mickey, love pictures. <laughs> this is 1984. Sorry. When does the when does the war start? Or when is it when is it set? 2029. It starts in 2003, doesn't it? Yeah, in well, the third one, which I guess fans will consider canon or not canon, because it's mm. like. What do you think of it? I don't know. Is it is it part of the Terminator? Does it continue the story for you, Baron? Mm, yeah, I guess so. Does it? Do you think it's? But I don't know because Terminator One and Two sit in a very particular. Yeah, thing. totally. Like, I don't know. I think the they've obviously ends. tried to carry the story on and they've tried to complete it and give like a whole, you know, feel. thing. Yeah, but I just mm, yeah, it's just it's just kind of lost it. I just me. think cause, yeah, the tone's slightly. It's not James Cameron. The tone's slightly no. different. But I mean, I guess you know we shouldn't talk about that because it hasn't happened yet because yeah, we don't know about it's it be continued. to be continued so yeah Ed Dugans we found uh, we've actually identified the uh, gentleman chasing uh, Michael Bean who also seems to be struck by the same thing that uh, the previous actor we were talking about Tom Oberhaus the curse of the Terminator uh, he did he's got two credits which actually ended with the Terminator the same uh, as the other guy playing a cop in it he played a guard in the Rockford Files and then cop in Alley in the Terminator so quite a short I think back in the day <laughs> in the, in, if you're in the an actor in the eighties and you got one acting job that's what you were for the rest of your life yeah, homeless men a little bit jinxed actually because as we were saying earlier Lin, uh, Linda Hamilton we haven't really seen her much in no anything else and they thought the omen was bad she's yeah. probably just spending all that camera money she got from the divorce cause yeah true oh, yeah he uh, obviously divorced Gail and her how old was she when she filmed this by the way uh, 29 I think and how old was Cameron? I think Cameron now is 64. We can Google it. But uh, yeah. God bless Google. God bless <laughs> Google. You never need to know anything anymore. But yeah, this guy, uh, what is it? Ed Dugans, he became a production assistant and his career never went any further than that. He was a production assistant on Everything to Gain in 1996 and then Gideon in 1999 and then that was it. So whatever he's doing now, it ain't in the world Everything's of Everything to Gain and yet nothing to Gain. Yeah. <laughs> Ed Dugans, Ed Gain. Huh. So yeah, department store. Anything to add, anyone? Anyone? Why don't, anyone? They, just, why don't they just switch the lights on? What's That's a good point. What's with all the torches? Uh, because they the, can't be asked to find the lights. The fuse box would all be in the office in the place where you like have all the, like the security Not thing where you have the cameras. Well, you know, you must have worked in a shop before. Uh, no. no. Well. Uh, James Cameron was born in 1954, so do the maths on that one, and we'll get to Linda Hamilton in a second. Mm -hmm. <sighs> this is what the show is all about, listener. Uh, listen oh. to people Google stuff while you <laughs> sit there on your boring commute. Just, just, brain, <laughs> just brainstorming. 1956, so she's two years younger. Oh, okay, oh. so, so she was 28 when she made Terminator. Yeah. Oh. And she had that kind of like feathered. To be fair, hair. she, I think she pulled off being 19 quite well. She's yeah. not 19. I think she she's meant to be her age. 
No. Yeah, she was. She's supposed to be 19 in Terminator. Yeah. Where did you read that? IMBD. Oh. oh what? Yeah. She, what? She's meant to... She's, she's meant to be 19 in it. Yeah, I swear down. Let me see that. Yeah, I will show you. I just stubbed my thing on the uh, on the uh, production desk. It's well. um they're saying about um when in Terminator Two, John Connor is ten years old, and they show a picture of uh, uh, his driving license and when he's born. Right. And it was like ten years previous. So. Oh no! I think because Terminator Two, in Terminator Lore, is set in nineteen ninety four. Right. Although, Edward Furlong looks older than ten. But yeah, he was conceived in 1984. That makes Terminator 2 1984. But I still can't see her as being 19. Well, that's what it says. Really? Yeah. Why don't they just make her her age at 28? I don't know. <laughs> then she's she looks 38 in Terminator 2. What's wrong with that? She could have had a kid at 28. Mm. I'm Doctor gonna, I'm Silverman. Gonna, I'm going to find it. <laughs> Stop saying that. It's from another film. We've not got to it yet. Yeah, but it's all linked. But yeah, she's 19. Wow. Right. So yeah, that was uh, episode five in the department store where <laughs> Carl Reese, aka Michael Bean, uh, gets some lovely uh, Nike Vandal sneakers and a lovely uh, trench coat, and which apparently you trousers can s- and piss stained trousers. <laughs> I, wait a minute before we wrap up this episode. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh no. no! We've He's seen a very suspect dark well. patch <laughs> on the gluteus maximus area of said pants. Michael Bean's got you would so Bain's change ass. those. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, if you freeze frame at eight minutes one second, folks. As Michael Bean runs down the alleyway, he's got a very distinct stain in the seat area of his. Uh, They've definitely pants. been soiled. Definitely been soiled. <laughs> <laughs> Along with this Keep podcast. Shame tra- on you, Kyle. <laughs> Keep said tramp warm. Yeah, well, thanks for listening. Tune in tomorrow (laughs) for uh, episode six as we go from minute 10 uh, to 12. Uh, Please subscribe on YouTube and iTunes and find us on Facebook at T2. God, why do I keep saying that? 2T, T T Minute Terminator. (laughs) And you'll see a lovely uh, picture of our eminent co-host, Baron, with uh, half a metal face. That's Mm. like a Terminator. Terminator. So, yeah, subscribe, find us, etc. And, uh, yeah, tune in tomorrow. Hasta la vista. Cheers. Baby. I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I'm stupid in my head. I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I have big square.